the political space for which citizens need answers. These answers cannot be settled or provided by a mere election being organized as a ritual. You have heard, for example, Ugandan is concerned about the size of our parliament. That actually our parliament is too big for a small economy. And I agree. And for me, this is not a new arena. Over the last couple of years, even when I was still LOP, I talked about these reforms, including reforms that will go a long way in reducing the size of parliament to rhyme with the capacity of the nation to support a sizable, purposeful and useful parliament. People have talked about this. How do you achieve this without meaningful constitutional reforms and electoral reforms? We have spoken about changing the form of electing members of parliament. That the current first past the post does not give the nation the kind of parliament we desire. That probably a new arrangement in the form of proportional representation will give this country a better parliament. The last census, the census for which you have gotten provisional results, have given the country an indication of the structure of our population, in which young people between 17 and 25 years compose the majority. As I speak, we can only guarantee the younger people only four positions in the parliament, or probably five, the four regional members of parliament for the youth, and then the woman MP, the youth MP for young women. Only five is a guarantee. If we changed to proportional representation and made it mandatory for each party to nominate a particular percentage of youth with categories, you can have 50 youth MPs in parliament or even more. Same thing with women. So I think we need to confront these issues with the sincerity as a nation and this is being corridor talk. So I am going to be leading the onslaught, at least in the parliament. I have spoken to other party platforms, not all, but I'm still consulting, so that we join together. It's not about me. It's not about my friends. It's about this country. And these, for me, are issues for which the opposition and other leaders that need a new Uganda, civil society, cultural institutions, religious institutions, must be offered a platform to speak to. How do you address, for example, the issue of Ugandans in diaspora who would like to have their voice heard in our elections. These are Ugandans in their thousands, if not millions, that subscribe to Uganda as home, but have no say in how the country makes a choice for leadership. Without meaningful electoral reforms, how do you guarantee their participation in the elections? These are the issues that we need to confront. I am aware of uh, other nations in Africa in which the diaspora votes. So can the opposition run away? Can the political actors run away from the influence and impact of the diaspora and may provide a platform for their participation in the next elections? Otherwise, merely mentioning their, the volume of their remittances that support our small budget is not enough. We must make them an integral part of decisions in leadership in this country. And for me, it's a matter for which we must have an open conversation. How do we talk about decentralization now? We all know and agree that decentralization has actually failed. The last round of activity in the parliament, which composed of rationalization of government agencies, was an admission of the failure of this form of governance which is decentralization in part. So the country must discuss a new form of power sharing. The country must be able to discuss a new form of devolution of power so that resources are shared properly. The country is discussing corruption at all levels of government, at all strata. So how do you guarantee that you decongest the center where corruption has taken root and be able to ensure that resources go to the people in their regions. Proportionately, people get resources depending on their contra uh, contribution to the national budget, but also equal rights for those regions that are still lagging behind. 
without a proper framework in the constitution that guarantees devolution. So these must be debated and discussed. How do you go into an election without discussing the way the electoral commission is composed in a multi-party democracy? We may not achieve everything at a single go, but the opposition must lead an onslaught, must offer leadership in a honest conversation about the role of the electoral commission. How do you go into an election when you have a president that is in the evening of his career and life without properly discussing the transition? So, what form of transition? You remember the, the, the Dr. Lumibaiga bill that failed in the, from the ninth parliament, the, transition, the presidential transition bill. It's high time this conversation returned on table to be part of the national conversation on how you transition from one person to the other. You witness an election in the UK in which a party lost and on the same day a transition took place. So how can we be a pack of gamblers we're not discussing democracy and transitions. There's no doubt the NRM or Genome 7 will leave power. So should the, 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 the transition be chaotic? How do we ensure? Who is the guarantor of our fighting democracy? Who guarantees that? The Genome 7 can guarantee this power by holding on to the gun. That's why, in guaranteeing his power, instead of appointing a uh, uh, medical doctor and teachers, I want some more standardized but who is going to guarantee without a constitutional framework the way transition as a country and guarantee that the transition will not be chaotic and guarantee that all institutions respect the transition? We must have this conversation on table and it does not end with us. It's not a preserve of politicians. How do you really go into another round of election cycle without guarantees on the role of the military? We all know the kind of the visit on political actors in that election. Should we simply go back posturing as if nothing happened? As we speak now, the people who disappeared in the last election are still missing. In fact, I should inform the country that I've written to the right honorable speaker about the commitments of government on the missing persons. My thinking earlier was that uh, this was a matter that was going to be pursued by my successors, but seemed to be sleeping. The same people were missing in the last, after the last election, still missing. I've written to the speaker and I've retrieved the answer because parliament deliberated and debated about these people and there were t decisions taken on that day, but there was no follow-up. So I want these issues. So how do you speak to these families of the missing persons? By simply turning back to go back to the booth and, you know, participate in another round of election? Do you even remember that the day that debate took place, we were able to situate a one leader at CMI and there was conceding by government that actually they have him? So how come that Damulia is still in detention? Has never been to court? So these issues must return before we can gear up for another, you know, circus of an election. And there must be commitment from all and sundry that the rules of the game must be respected. But most importantly, the rules must be reconstructed for all to participate. The claim of it is late must not arise. It can never be late for us to do right. I've had people saying, no, it's late, it's fast, just prepare. Prepare for circus. It's not late, we have time. Unless some people have their brains on holiday in some cases, but if all of us have our brains working 24-7, we have time. I am actually aware that particular drafts of reforms have been made. I recollect the Honorable Nuagaba's bill from the 10th Parliament. We can build on that. The Honorable Segona made submissions in the 9th Parliament. They are available. So it is let's talk. It is talk of the lazy and laggard. It must not be accepted. We must be warmer. We must warm up to a possibility. But all we need is to make sure that as leaders, we invoke everyone. We invite everyone to participate. Not politicians only, all stakeholders, all that are concerned with the future of this country must be given a platform to make their views felt and informed. I thank you. Probably I should uh, uh, respond to any questions. Um,
they are there in English before I give a brief Uganda version. But feel free to ask any question that you think is important for my attention to respond to you. Honorable, relatively about the uh, uh, reforms, previously the Minister of Constitutional Justice, Constitution, Constitution Affairs, Justice and Constitutional Affairs, yeah. mm. he said uh, they don't have money to handle this process. And I think he was referring it to the Uganda Law Reform Commission. Do you think the government is willing to take up this process? I, I, I dare say that uh, whoever raised the flag of